Well, you know, that's from, a, that's some past. And so suburbia just wasteland and wasteland. And because those standards become basically embedded uniformly, they also make downtown impossible. You know, so downtown redevelopment requires the, you to handle water as if it were the suburbs. It requires you to, to basically manage your electricity as if it were the suburbs. It requires, you know, fire, fire, uh, fire standards as if there were, you know, 30-story high rises in the suburbs and so forth. And there are all these impediments because you have exactly the wrong standards being applied. Now, it used to be that the standards were wrong because they were suburban. Now the standards are additionally wrong because they're also from the 20th century, which is a way of being American that has disappeared. And you basically have to take that whole thing. By the way, don't dismantle the bureaucracy. There's a lot of that. By the way, I've, I've spoken to five people that were furious in the past two days. Really outspoken. They all wanted to get rid of government. That's impossible. Napoleon couldn't do it. Lenin couldn't do it. Okay? The czar leaves. You know, Louis XVI is guillotined, but the bureaucracy persists, okay? So the way to do it is you don't get rid of the bureaucracy, you change their standards. As long as they're administering something, they're okay. <laughs> and by the way, don't ever tell them not to build something because that eviscerates their budget. Don't tell the DOT not to build something. You know, tell them to either take it down, which they're happy to because they're spending money, or to build something else. As long, see what you find, I've always found that when I tell them to do something, they can spend money and do in good time, they're happy. When I tell them not to do anything, they can't stand it. So just have a plan that says, look, this is what we actually want. We actually want this highway down, we actually want the sidewalk widened, you know, we actually want this and that done. They'll do that, but just don't ever tell them don't do. Because the bureaucracy is self-perpetuating financially. So two things, keep them in place, but change their manuals and give them something to do. And all these manuals are now available, finally, from every organization, the ULI, the Congress for the New Urbanism with the codes, the ITE with the new standards. What you have to do is download them locally. The Institute of Traffic Engineers has a whole new book, a whole new book called Context-Based Design for Major Thoroughfares. Actually, for, for thoroughfares. They, it's not even major. It's all thoroughfares. There's a new book. You have an old book. You have a book that was designed for 1956 Cadillac with fins and first-generation drivers. That's what you have. That's what most people have, the old standards, the old parking standards, the old everything standards. Now, so you, one responsibility you have is to just get the entire, don't fight the government, just get them to administer something worth administering, download modern standards and documents. Virtually every single specialty has the modern standard for the 21st century. And by the way, it's not automatic because they're, they're national standards. You have to bring them in. The elected officials say, I want the new IT standard. I want the new uh, smart code standards. I want the new whatever, the green standards, whatever it is, the new planting standards, everything. And the, what the good ones have in common is that there isn't a single solution. There are solutions for every single density, every single degree of mixed use. There are also some not very good, not very good new standards that are written by specialists that tend to suburbanize everything. Like a lot of the swale standards, a lot of the water filtration standards that are coming out will prevent redevelopment downtown, so be very, very careful. You know, it's just like the standard of the utility company who figured out that the yellow lights consumed half as much electricity. So they replaced all the lights with yellow cobra heads. You know, and indeed, it's half the electricity. The problem is that it makes your skin look like you're dying on your deathbed. So nobody would take, have, you know, why would you have a date downtown when, when you look like death? <laughs> okay? And you see the specialists look at only one thing, but the people who know what they're doing look at lots of things. And it's not to ban the cobra head or ban the yellow light. The cobra head and yellow light are very good for certain things like highways when there are no pedestrians. But when you come downtown, by the way, I've seen your fixtures are nice looking. I don't know about the bulb because I haven't seen them yet. But it's not just the fixture, it's the bulb. The bulb, a bulb can make you look great, can make you look sick. A bulb can make a tree look great or look sick. The way you light your buildings, you know, you can either do it to alert everybody that you're afraid of crime or to alert everybody that it's a beautiful building. And it's two different standards, two different kinds of people. And mostly it's the crime people that are lighting the buildings. 
right? And by the way, I did a walking tour of your downtown, and it's obvious that your trash collectors are running the place. Uh, their convenience is paramount. Uh, and uh, I understand their importance, but you know, there are a couple of other things that, that, that we need to, uh, that they need to consider. So I spoke about the downtown and the importance of getting this downtown, of getting impediments out of the way, immediately out of the way, so that the natural popularity of this place, the natural beauty of some of your buildings, the fact, the fact that you love it and miss it, the old downtown, it's important that you get it to happen as quickly as possible. Just remove impediments. I think you know what you're doing. Actually, they're institutional impediments. You know, it's the standards. It's the old guys that graduated 1962 from Auburn or Georgia Tech. You know, and they haven't read a book since. That's really, <laughs> that's really, and you laugh because it's true. That's, you can picture them. Class of 62, Georgia Tech, secret, you know, secret signal. I see them everywhere. Class of 62 ring is really a bad, bad news usually. Uh, and then there are the suburbs. So we let's talk about the suburbs. You have 70, 80 percent suburban sprawl. Now I want to be very clear about this. There's, I think there are a lot of uh, planners whose credentials are explaining to you how difficult and confusing it is. And they show you GIS, maps to the end, you know, this is the information, these are the charts, you know, this is the processes, the arrows. And their credential is not having you understand but actually saying, aha, it's so hard, I have to trust this guy, okay? And I don't think that gets you very far. And I don't think they themselves fully understand what they're doing, unless you're able to explain very simply, that's a pretty good symptom that you don't understand what you're talking about. So let me try to explain something very simply. Suburban sprawl, okay? There are two types of urbanism. We all know what there are, what they are, and there are only two types. There's walkable urbanism, where you can walk and cars can also be, and you've all been there, and we love them, and they're the older places. You know, the places that survived, the Charlestons, New York, New Orleans, San Francisco's. They've become rare, and so they've become tourist attractions in themselves. People will actually get in a flight and go somewhere just to walk. It's not the good, it's not the good climate. The shopping is now uniform everywhere, it ain't that. You can download entertainment from the web, okay, what is it? Walkability has become so rare that Disney charges $40 a day just to walk. <laughs> you know what those parks do is walk. 2% of the time you're on a ride, the rest of the time you're walking, Americans walking. Pleasurably, interestingly, the way you do in urbanism. That's the way it all used to be. Because people didn't have cars until essentially until the 1950s. If you couldn't walk to your daily needs, you couldn't survive, your, your town turned into a ghost town. You had to be able to walk to your daily needs. And as late as the 50s or 60s, families didn't have two cars. You still had to do that, and the kids still walked to school, all that, okay? Now that model is traditional urbanism, and it is perfectly recognizable. If you go to Pompeii, okay, you go to Pompeii, you can figure out Pompeii within 45 minutes. Aha, uh -huh, that's the shops, that's the stadium, this is where I go, I'm oriented. You know, and this is almost 3,000 years ago. You know, 25, is it? Yeah, it's about 2,500 years ago. The Roman town you can recognize, it's so much like the human habitat. And by the way, you go to Beijing, some weird alien culture, and you walk through the old hutongs, you can figure it out in 20 minutes. 20 minutes, this is where they live, this is where they eat, I'm oriented, I like it, I feel good, this is where you walk, you can figure it all out. There's something constant and human and cross-cultural and across time in traditional urbanism. And mostly humans love it. They love the stuff so long as it's safe and clean. They really do. And then we changed the model in the post-war period, and it was for a simple reason. You said, cars are everywhere. Let us accommodate the car, because cars are the future. So whole new sets of standards came in for parking, and for the width of highways, and for signage, and for the way retail you know, became bigger. By the way, the big box, okay, this system that we have out in the suburbs, there's a lot of asphalt in the suburbs. Why is there so much traffic congestion? Why is the traffic congestion all out there and not in here? Traffic congestion is never downtown, not even in LA. Traffic congestion is in the suburbs. The reason is that the entire suburban system is based on what's called a dendritic system, which is like a tree, in which the cul-de-sac where you live 
only feeds the local street, which only feeds the collector, which only feeds the arterial, which only feeds the highway. There's only one way to get from anywhere to anywhere, and you always hit the arterial.